Donna here from the Everything Saxophone Podcast. We're at the NAMM Show 2023. It's day three, and all these podcasts are, have been sponsored by Rovner Products. I'm at the Lafrique booth uh, over here, and we've got some new stuff uh, as well. So welcome again to the podcast. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again yeah. for sure. So uh, let's talk about, first of all, people that did not see us. Oh, my gosh. It was pre-pandemic, right? I think it was 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2019. Oh, my yeah. God. Four years ago. That's so, that's, Hans, that's, incre- that's, that's insane. All right. Can you talk to us about the Lafrique uh, for yeah. those that did not watch that other video first? And yes. then we're going to talk about the new thing that you sure, have. Sure, sure. So we make a sound bridge for wind instruments, so brass and woodwinds, so saxophones. I'm a saxophone player. I designed it for saxophone because I needed to play a crazy nice piece but with a lot of altissimo together with mallets and the altissimo always yeah, wants to be too sharp and I needed to get that fixed. So I looked at my instrument and I thought okay the energy of my tone needs to travel in the material of my instrument and if it travels through tight connections, clamping connections you lose your tone a little bit. So it slows down to resistance. So I offer the tone a bypass with two bridges to move from the mouthpiece to the neck of the saxophone uh, easier. So and an energy always chooses the easiest path of traveling. Right. And that's why overtones are more in tune because if they slow down, they become compressed and now they can go on with the, the normal shape, so they stay in the same length, so the tuning is better in the old okay. And I've heard recordings too, he sent me recordings of all types of instruments, uh, brass, saxophones, that are just, it's uh, its like crystal clear. It, um, the overtones are ringing so much that it's crystal clear. It's incredible actually. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, no, you're welcome. Thanks yeah. for sending them to me. Yeah. So we, we, we had done a podcast interview with regard to the Lafreaks, the sound yeah. bridges and stuff. And I know a lot of my personal friends out here um, that have bought these, that use them um, all the time. Yeah. Cool. That's all right. Yeah. Now you have something new that you, yeah. you found me on the floor that you want to talk to us about. Yes. So the sound bridge works so well because it's two plates and the underplate is put on the instrument, attached on the instrument, on a way that the underplate is free to resonate. So I was thinking during playing, during COVID, and I was thinking, wow, why am I clamping my reed on my saxophone mouthpiece if it's maybe also possible to attach it like a Lefric is attached on the instrument? And then it's a flexible uh, connection, so your whole reed can resonate on its full length. So I came up with this thing. It's actually the upper plate of the Lefric, a little bit different, with an elastic cord in it and two beads under. So the beads can only touch your reed with a very small surface because they are straight and your reed is a curve. So they only touch it with a very small surface, but they are also flexible. So if you want to play lower or louder, the reed is allowed to resonate on its full length and gives you much more freedom in giving a, making a crescendo without feeling a ceiling in a crescendo. Oh, interesting. So it, it stays wide and it stays easy to play. Interesting. And what always is, what I found out myself always, if, if I put my saxophone away, and I play a cane reed still, but if I put my saxophone away, the reed gets dry again. But if, it's, if you play, it gets bigger, so it absorbs. But with a clamping ligature, the reed cannot go anywhere. So it, it's disturbing the shape of the reed. With this ligature, I can just put my saxophone away, my reed can dry, I can take it and I can play. Because it's not changing the shape of the reed anymore. That's interesting. So it's flexible. So that's one of the benefits that you can have also. So that's if you double, then it's easy to get your other instrument because your reed is not yeah, dried out and too tight. Okay, so yeah, let me get some clarification for me and, and also because it's the third day of NAM, so I'm a little, <laughs> a little 
crazy at this point. So you're saying, like, let's say you're doubling on the stage, right? And, um, you know, you're, you're doubling alto and tenor, right? So you have your alto down, you're playing tenor for a number of songs. You, you, your alto read may dry out. But what you're yeah. saying with this, with this new ligature... It's not so, ligature, such a problem. It's, it's not going to dry out as much? Is that what you're it's, saying? It's, it's drying out, but okay. normally if you play, it's going to extend. So it, it's getting bigger. So if you have a ligature that's, that is not flexible, it changes the shape of your reed. Got it. And then it dries out, and then this, this change of the reed stays in. But okay. with, with my ligature, it's, it can extend and can go back because it's flexible. Okay, now I'm curious also, does that extend the life of the reed? I think it's, it's pretty new. So we launched it actually at NEM for official, but in Germany we did it last two weeks ago okay. at Nuremberg show. And we have a lot of players, and including myself. I can play a much more reach now. That's interesting, I guess, because it can account for it can account for a lot of um, uh, I don't want to say errors, but you know, a lot of a lot of things that can happen with reads. Like not every read works in the box, but maybe what you're saying, if I'm right. What you're saying with this ligature, this can account for some of those reads in the box that don't usually work right away. Or yeah. am I wrong? Yeah. That's interesting. It, That's it, pretty cool. It, I, I really took a lot of reads and I put them on. And normally with a normal ligature, I have, oh no, this one is, some it didn't even work. And now I can just play actually on, on all my reads. That's awesome. Now can you show this, I'll, I'll hold this, can you show this on your, on your saxophone? Yeah, sure. So now I have the ligature on, so it's attached and you see that it's only touching the reed with a very small surface, very small points. And then what I think is also nice, there's no big ligature here so that I can, I have space now to put the, the oh, sound right, bridge right. direct from the reed. And then you take the first place where you produce your sound take it over directly to the neck of your instrument and that right. makes it even more direct, more clear and easier to play. Got it. Okay, cool. And that, you know, um, I'm curious too. We've got the two beads here, let's say, right? So can these, can you move these? Can you move like the... the um, you let's can see. put them on the side if you like. You could, you could even maybe put one on each side. You could also, yeah. could you also change the, the, uh, the distance? The, yeah, yeah, the distance, yeah. And, it and all changes a little bit. Got but it. I prefer to put it always on the reed. Okay, right, 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 the, for sure. The elastic band dampens a little bit again. Got and it. I don't want to dampen my reed. I want to have the full range of frequencies and I want to use them. Okay, now here's the other question too. So like you're using the bridge, sound bridge obviously too. If someone wasn't using the sound bridge, they should they could also change the placement of the ligature. They could place it lower, they could place it higher, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and it, and this this is for alto. Like there are definitely two different sizes, one for or at least yeah. more than that. I think you've got I, alto. I tenor. came up with the idea to just make four sizes. So the medium size is always um, fixed, like it's for a classical alto mouthpiece. But Hard if rubber. you want to have it smaller, because you have a jazz mouthpiece that is a little less big, you can adjust it. Very very simple. By adjust the, re the <laughs> oh sorry, by adjust um, the elastic band, and if you adjust it, you can make it a little tighter for a, a jazz mouthpiece or something. That's and cool. Actually, if you say I I forgot my tenor mouthpiece or tenor ligature, you can also adjust it that it's big enough for tenor, and then the the large one is normally for tenor, but you can make it larger to go to the berry. But you can also make it smaller to put it on a jazz mouthpiece. So it's actually, yeah, you can adjust it for different yeah, op options. There's a lot of, and actually we were talking about the word freedom before. There's a lot more freedom <laughs> when you think about it. It's not just, it's not just freedom of placing, you know, it's not just like allowing the reed to freely vibrate, but it, you're also talking about freedom of different types of mouthpieces and you know how many times do people forget their their ligatures <laughs> yeah it happens <laughs> I, <laughs> I can <did>. tell you <laughs> that's awesome so 
this is a great story for this, for sure. And so this has been out for only two weeks now? Yeah. Wow. This is pretty new. So it was hard work to get it done for an M show. So and I, I'm happy that, uh, that, that we were in time for an M show to launch it and to tell the world about it. And then what's the website? www.lefrec.com Awesome. So around end of May, June-ish or so, definitely look for this. And you can see the big picture in the background as well, right there, and right there too. That's great. Perfect. So it looks like this. Awesome. Hey, Hans, thanks so much for catching me. I'm so glad yeah, we got the chance to talk. Thank you for coming by. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Okay. Thanks so it's much. Very nice seeing you again. Same here as well. And please check it out. It's really something different. Cool.